I am Jules Holland. And I am Jim Moyer. Join us for Jules and Jim's Joy Joyride. Ride. Yes, Joyride. Motoring memories. Train travel trips. Things on boats. Air crashes. <laughs> Barrows and cycling moments. Sex on the back seat of a Datsun. Are we, are we recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was uh, yeah. That was yeah. And a casual approach to a beginning. It is of a, a casual podcast, start, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we're here today with a fella who's known variously as an actor, a screenwriter, and that macho fella who hangs around at the Lido. It's Tony Pitts. Great hero of the modern world. I'm so delighted to have him here today. Yeah. Well, so, it's good to be here. It is good to have you, Tony. Now, first thing, I yes. say, you brazenly and bravely announced yes. that you've... How many cars have you had this year? Well, I'm good, I was going to... I was just about... The silence at the top there was me. I was thinking whether I'm going to have to look in my phone, but I suspect... I'm not sure now. I think it's nine. Nine cars. I think nine and year. three motorbikes. Nine free motorbikes, so it's a 10, 11, 12, 12 cars in, in less than sort of, uh, I, I, as many you know, months. I suspect it it might even be worse than that. I'll have to, I'll have to go back. I had, um, I had a, a frenzied uh, Porsche uh, three, four, four or five months through, uh, and they went back for different reasons. Mainly my, uh, I've got the attention span of a five-year-old, so that was the main reason they went back. But uh, the other reason they went back was I'd buy one and then uh, take it back because there was um, something inconsequential needed fixing, like the radio, like a button. And then I'd get back to the dealers and made the mistake of always taking my son Fred with me. And then we'd see something nicer and Fred would say, that might be nice, Dad. And you can't uh, let Fred know. I, I can't do Yeah, Fred, essentially, I lay all the... Um, yeah, I'm giddy with it. I'm afraid. But you're like, always so you're always making mistakes. I'm always making mistakes. You, as long as I've not, <laughs> yeah. you've always I said. Well, you got a new yeah. motor? Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. Oh, oh dear. dear. It's, <laughs> terrible. it's a terrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first car? Where did you start? Where, first, where, where does motoring start? Oh from? well, okay. So my first car was I was uh, a little soap sod in the eighties and nineties. I was in Emmerdale and. Um, I, I was a pioneer, Jules. I was a pioneer of uh, relationships with local motor trade when I went to George Spencer's, who was a Seat dealer in Wakefield, and convinced him that it would benefit his, uh, his small dealerships to have me driving one of his cars for free. So I passed my test, and I got a Seat Ibiza, a red one. It's a uh, more, with, insure, more, more to insure if it's red, isn't it? Uh, yeah, more to insure. Well, I had no cost. The the only cost to me was I had to have Tony Pitt's drive see at Ibiza written on both the doors. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, a small price uh, my, to pay. My favourite story of that was I remember pulling into a service station near St Albans <laughs> at two in the morning and I was the only person on there and I, the, I could see the disdain in the cashier's face before it even alighted. And I paid for my petrol, sauntered across to the, because it was night time, I was outside. And there was only me there, and he said, ah, uh, oh. he said, is that your car? I'm, yes, it is my car. He said, uh, are you Tony Pitts then? I said, yeah, I'm Tony Pitts. He went, right, £14. Pay for the petrol and left. So, yeah, so the first one was, <laughs> I moved from the sea to Beetha, though. I got uh, headhunted by a budget renter car. Who could see? Who could see that the, uh, clearly I was beating a path, and they offered me a Sierra, uh, and they said to me, uh, "It'll come with a car phone." And all, uh, Michelle, she was called Michelle from Budget, and she said, uh, "It'll come with a car phone." And she said, "Also, uh, you could get to change it every six months." That was white with orange stripes, but unfortunately, that relationship didn't last very long because they asked me. The payment for uh, what they wanted me to do was to come along to their customer 
liaison evenings and um, <laughs> and act as a representative for Budget and Emmerdale. And uh, well, actually, went and, and went and represented a drunken young actor really well. So that that was. Well, so, and how did the young drunken young, young actor behave when um, when he was when he was there? Not 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 well. Uh, um, if I had any shame, I'd be feeling it now. I think um, I think I overcompensated for my gauche and social awkwardness by being obnoxiously loud and uh, and rude about. The people that were giving me a free car. <laughs> the old, the old, the old, the old showbiz the, the, the classy. <laughs> did you um, <laughs> did you get to drive a tractor on Emmerdale? And on uh, on Emmerdale. No, I tell you, the only tractor I drove was when I um, when I when I got Emmerdale as a job. I'd just finished a Ken Loach film called Looks and Smiles, and the Sheffield Star came to uh, where I lived and took me out into a field, and the headline was Red Letter Day for New Star Tony. And they wanted some action shots of me driving a tractor uh, on the outskirts of Sheffield. <laughs> and you did? I, I did, yeah. I did. Yeah. yeah. But out of interest, just going back to the budget rent the car, where yeah. where you were unfortunately yes. to the middle management, you yeah. didn't behave as well as you might have That's done after idea. their great generosity. Mm. Was that car sign written as well? That one, that just said budget rent a car. But then, in an unexpected twist, I befriended uh, Mark with curly hair from Milton Keynes. Who was a? Uh, he, he supplied VWs to fleet sales company companies, and he said, uh, "I'm going to get you into a GTI." And he got me into uh, Mark. What 1990? What Mark GTI would that be? About 1992, 93. I had three Golf GTIs, uh, just the with nothing, nothing written on them. So uh, you wrote on them yourself. I wrote on myself. <laughs> the, yeah, this. Yeah, well, I, it, that that definitely didn't um, get the get the returns that they were hoping for. Have you ever driven a tractor? Uh, as a child, one of the earliest photographs of me existent is uh, my father took me to the beach at Margate, where there was a rusting tractor. I was placed on it and pretended to drive it, and that's one of the earliest existing images of me. Um, and um, and so I would look at that image for years and imagine that I could drive a tractor. But there's a lot more to it. You can't go fooling around with a tractor. No, I used to, I just, I, when I was 14, I went to work on a farm. I went and knocked on the door, literally, yeah. and said, have you got any work? And they said, yes, come in. Can you drive a tractor? I went, yes. yes. And so, the, uh, he, of course, he knew I couldn't. So he sat me on there and says, right, it's literally push yeah. it forward and, yeah. and put your foot on the pedal. But the thing that I really liked was that you had um, a tractor coat because it was bleak midwinter. You've got to have the right and you gear. you wore a coat which was about two inches thick, weighed three tons. Yeah, and you'd put Sheep that skin. on. No, it was just a big old coat. I think it must have been pre Second World War, but it was a giant thing. Was, it, a, was the last tractor driver sort of, did he die in it, sort of thing of hypothermia? Yeah, I would think. Was probably, it from Hell yeah. Drivers? And was it, it a tractor coat or was it the tractor coat? It was tractor the tractor coat. coat. The so tractor coat. Yeah, you so, put that yeah. on when you got on the tractor. Yeah. And what are the two errors I made? Was uh, I didn't um, I didn't bank on the the trailer behind being wider than the tractor, no. so I came through yes. a gate and it took the gate down with it and all the fences <laughs> on, the, on the surrounding property and dragged them. And uh, so I got I went and then I unleashed about forty pigs from that field, and then That's day one. Uh, then the yeah, 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 and then the following week I backed it into a pigsty, knocked that down, and all the pigs escaped from that. <laughs> but I was still allowed to drive it. My uncle Dave, who showed me how to play the piano, he was a lorry driver and he worked for different people over the years. But one of the people, he worked for um, the GPO, but he had an articulated lorry, yeah. which of course is like a vast lorry with a cab and a long trailer on it. Yes. But in those days, it, they would park them in the small terrace streets where they lived. You're not allowed to yeah. do that now. And it would park there. And he used to do this trip where he'd go to Wales and he took me with him. And it was 
magical time going along the old A4, yeah. stopping at the transport calf with sort of rockers and the and the, and the jukeboxes in, in there. Was this in his and Yorks. van? No, there no, was, a, it was a huge, great big. Was lorry. it a Fodden? Uh, it, no, I tell you, it was a, ERF. No, it was an Albion. Albion, oh, Albion, nice lovely, place. an Albion, okay, a yeah. huge tractor. Yeah, that was yeah. a huge cab, and then a big artic, big like trailer on the back of it, yeah. filled with second hand with the old Baker Light phones that were going in to be taken down to Wales to yeah. to, to, to to meet their maker or whatever. What, to be melted be, down. To be melted Baker down. Like to be Secret Service, exactly. It's hella fun. Baker like graveyard. That's and right. what the, t- the t- I suppose they yeah, re- could they melt them down. I suppose they could melt melt them down, turn re- them into re- radiograms, recycle Baker like. I'm not sure what they did and, and use them for inserts, but uh, for things. But the, the highlight for me was, and it was the introduction to the commercial driving because what he did, they had a code the lorry drivers when one lorry would overtake the yeah, other, flash him. you'd flash the light yeah. so he'd know he could pull That's in, right. it was safe to pull in. That's so right. we'd done the whole job. I said, How are you doing? It's really great having this code, the unspoken code of the road, yes. and I can be part of this on about 12. Yes. He said, Well, if you like, on the next, when the next bloke comes past, he said, You can do it. So once where he's ready to put, once we've, once he's ready to, once we've, he's come past us, you flash once. And oh, you flash twice. He pulls in and flashes you once to thank him, and you flash him once. But oh, so I've got it. So I'm going to be part of it. So the lorry comes past us. Huge articulate lorry. Oh, he's come past us. Flash the lights. He pulls in. Nearly knocks it off the road. Yeah. I've done it too soon. His horns blazing. This is going. Too soon with a yeah. flash. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, but I, from that day, I was enchanted by the by the road yeah. and commercial and haulish. I, 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 my first job was a, a truck engineer. I was a, a, a truck mechanic. A fitter. A truck mechanic. I was a I was a diesel fitter, and that was after I had a, a, an obsession from the age of about twelve to fifteen, sixteen, with. Uh, Commercial transport, yeah, with trucks and um, it's when William Rogers was the transport secretary and uh, yeah, I used to have the, that was my daydream. Uh, as I looked out the window, uh, was because I worked out that uh, I could essentially be left alone for the rest of my life. It seemed to me as a lorry driver. Yes, only it's only limited exchanges with human beings. Uh, and yeah. meeting attractive people in transport cats with jukeboxes and doilies. Uh, uh, that's right. Mm. And yes, exactly that. So yeah, that was that was my first um, my first job was uh, at Kennings in Sheffield. That was a, an unhappy time for um, no. for all. I think, but nothing involved. to do with the vehicles. Well, I, I caused an ex a, an extensive um, amount of damage to. Several vehicles. And what you did and people's feelings. I did on purpose. Well, some of it. Well, it became. Per- well, what it says. What happened was, uh, they they sniffed me out. It's not one of them. I wasn't of the the pack, and uh, they started to initiate a campaign of bullying. Uh, but I refused that tyranny by uh, subvert. Well. <laughs> through what? many methods, including what, loosening. Well, the first, I, okay, okay. So no, I didn't do stuff like that. Well, what I did do, the first one, this was this is without thought. So they'd realised really quite early on that I wasn't suited for uh, interaction with other people. So that they'd said to, they'd just move me around. My my uncle was their best customer. And he had a fleet of lorries, so it would be hard to get rid of me. So they, uh, a lot of the blokes wouldn't work with me. They, uh, they said oh, uh, I was odd, so um, which I accepted. And they uh, put me in the stores and they put me out on the diesel pump. So then, but then what they gave me to do was PDIs, pre-delivery inspections. So before anything went out of the workshop, you get a, a sheet, an A4 size paper, and you have to tick off oil and temp- you check everything on before it goes out and that should take about three hours so what i used to do was it give me a sheet of those in the morning with uh, maybe 10 of those sheets to do over the next couple of days so i'd sit in the canteen and just tick everything without checking it and then i'd go and listen to the radio uh, at the top of the shop and uh but they seemed to happy enough with that got me out of the way and well that's were, the way to do it isn't it I yeah mean, we weren't so happy when the police uh, ordered six Sherpa vans to be taken and I'd done the pre-delivery inspection and not checked the oil uh, and uh, shame to my shame now I wrote pigs on the side of them. <laughs> <laughs> wrote pigs in, on the wax on the side of them as well and well, on my, the side of the Sherpas side of the Sherpas and my boss was called Ian Hunt so you can imagine 
how he was known on the shop floor. And uh, I did give him, he had a, already had a high, he had a, a sort of um, a febrile, giddy nature. Uh, he wasn't well suited to the job and he had a high pitched voice, but I did give him a twitch. Uh, and he. Um, you could, forced him to have a twitch. I what, forced him. Could, uh, yeah, could you give us an example of his high pitched voice? Uh, well, my name. Okay. It was a bit. Well, let us just have a bash at it. What do you think you're doing, Pitts? <laughs> and he called my nickname, there was Cess, imaginatively, Cess Pitts. Yeah, yeah. Where's fucking Cess? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite? Have you got a nice journey that you particularly like? Bike? Oh, got motorbike or car? Or, well, let's or, start with a motorbike. Okay, motorbike. I'd say my favourite motorbike journey is so I live in Brighton and I rode motorbike. I'm 58 now and I rode from the age of 20. Well, I had trials bikes as a kid. I stopped riding about 30 odd years ago and then got back into it a couple of years ago and uh, frankly uh, was petrified all over again. Uh, and just went round the block where I live. I got a bought the first thing I bought was a um, BMW R9T 1200. Uh, and so I so got... Going, so having not driven for years, no, you buy the big, most powerful, no, exactly. dangerous motorcycle yeah. you could that's possibly That's exactly, get exactly on, that. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then that's exactly right. None of this is lost to me, Jules. Mm. Uh, but this were you is dressed what, as, a, as a, out of interest, were you dressed as a, as a, um, a Nuremberg motorcycle, please? Very please? Similar. So, uh, black leather, orange, uh, open face, orange uh, helmet, got pictures to prove. And this is where uh, Dave comes into the story. So I rang the advanced uh, motorist. I thought I need a little bit of back to, back to biking is what I need. Yeah, you can't, just, you can't rush into something. Can't like rush that. into no, it. No. So de- so called, and uh, I live in Brighton, and a voice called, a uh, chap called Dave turned up, who would have been in his, is, I assume, still. In his mid sixties, and he said, "Oh, Tony, you all right?" I said, "Well, I'm okay. Uh, you know, I'm a little bit. I've not got the confidence yet that I need to get a couple of miles under my belt." Okay. So what we'll do is, uh, so he put earphones in and a microphone. He said, "You'll fo- follow me, Tony." So uh, I went out of the where I lived in Brighton up onto the A27, and within five minutes of meeting him, I was doing 125 on the A27. Absolutely, like like George Formby in the film, the mother just petrified, just hanging on for dear life, just looking forward and hanging on. And then we came off, and he's a killer cure, you know. I said, "You're," right. and he was right, and it did. He sounds like he might be a bit deranged. This bloke. he had, he had uh, that would be one interpretation. <laughs> so yeah, he did. So th- so he took me on a ride around uh, the outskirts of Brighton uh, that went up over Devil's Dyke. For those that know it. Uh, and uh, this is this is truly bizarre. So that's the only ride I've ever been doing on all my motorbikes. I do the same ride. It's a forty mile course. It's got long sweeping bends. It's got motorway. It's got uh, and I just repeatedly ride that course and get better. Um, on the bike. So Have you still got one now? No, well, it's the first time, Jim. I think it's the first time since I've known you. I had a Ducati up until about six months ago, uh, and I traded it in. Well, this, we're coming into the car world. I traded it in against a car, uh, but I'm very uh, keen now to... I like the new... Uh, there's a new Ducati out, a Street Fighter, and there's an MVO Gooster. Oh, you're so, going for, still going for power, aren't you? I, yeah. Do you know what I was thinking? One of my favourite rides is I went around the... Um, through Dorking. Yes. I had a girlfriend a long time ago, and I went... She lived in Shepparton, and I went from Deptford to Shepparton, right around the outside, underneath London, oh. on a... Um, I mean, the Francis Fr- Barnett. Through sewers. Sewers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On a... Yeah. Fra- <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Rabbit, rabbit, on a Francis... Yeah. A 250, Francis Barnett. Yeah. Francis Barnett. Francis Barnett. Francis. And it was fantastic. And I enough? really enjoyed that ride. I didn't want it to ever end. Enough power? What? Is that enough power? No, but I didn't... I didn't want the power. 
I was really happy just drifting along underground. in a gentle way. Yeah, you, and the smell of two-stroke is still a great... Where's this is underground, though? Are you, are you on the tube network? Not, underneath, not underground, I was, uh, the, beneath London. Is this underneath London. the arches? <laughs> is that what we're talking about? I took the long way around the bottom of London, let's yeah, put it that way. Oh. Oh, the bottom of... Right. Yeah, not underground, not down the sewers. Oh, oh that's Although yes. that would have been nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I do like getting down the sewer. Yes, I, I, do get like, any I, I do like the power. I do like the. I do like that. That's just silly boy's ego, I think. But I also think it's when I've got in trouble on bikes, um, and they're a lot easier to ride nowadays. Bikes in the world, that's for sure, with all the aids on them. Uh, but a little bit of power usually gets you out of trouble, doesn't it? Or into it, if you're not careful. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I said, I'd, I'd tiptoed towards it, tiptoed towards it, and there's, uh, I think the biggest thing I'd forgotten that I got reminded of it rather quickly is I remember my instructor 30 years ago saying to me, don't look at oncoming traffic because you'll just ride towards it. And that's exact. <laughs> that's exactly yeah, you what. That's you what you do. You don't want to do if that. You, if it's one thing you really don't. Want you to do. really don't want to do that. So, but I did. It took me a while to remember that. That's that's what's happening because essentially on a bike you go where you're looking, right? So yeah, I had a few. Um, where, yeah. where would you stand on? For instance, we were talking earlier. Where would you stand on this? We we spoke to uh, Bob Mortimer who came on to this, and yes. many years ago we had a little motorbike club with him, the yes. Gentleman's Motorbike Club. I mean, it was a pretty pathetic club, is the truth of it. But we did have quite a good slogan, oh, uh, well, okay. which was or oh, not slogan, our what was it, our sort of motto, yeah. which was the which was Sir Malcolm Campbell's the three C's of motoring: yes, care, courtesy, and concentration. Would I mean, you, I mean, yeah, no, no, I, 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 I mean immediately. I mean with, I mean. With the people that you've named, would be sufficient to make me want to be part of the group. The the slogans uh, uh, would seal that deal for me. We had uh, we've had talk of a motorbike club, haven't we, Jim? We we toyed with the cool guys. The cool guys, yeah. Well, we wanted to do that. That was yeah. uh, riding up and down Snake Pass. Yeah. Which yeah. which runs from Sheffield to Manchester, doesn't it? Well, yeah. It, what, 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 how would you describe the Sheffield style of motoring? Sheffield motorists, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I, the, well, I think the Sheffield motorists of the early seventies uh, that uh, I think of as. Um, would you say ponderous? No, no. I'd say the opposite. I'd say resolute and uh, uh, urgent. They've got right. hills to do, a lot of hills All to do. All seven hills, the only mm. town other than Rome to be built on seven hills. My riding style, my Sheffield riding style, is t- completely lifted th- from Cy Cannon, Simon Cannon, who was 19 when we were 12 and had an almost mythical status uh, in... Uh, he was a young in, tearaway. He, he, was a, he was a tearaway with uh, side uh, uh, tattoos, girlfriends, all the things. And you wanted to follow his style. Oh, very much did do. He had a fizzy, a Yamaha RFS1. Oh, yes, yeah. And then the next bike... Could we just sort of, explain, by the way, that yes. this 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 sort of this person that you've portrayed, which is like heroic Thor-like yes. person with his sideburns, yes. girlfriends, tattoos... Yeah. That the Yamaha FS1E, for those that don't know, yes. was for when people were 16, they could get a motorbike. Yes. They changed the law, yes. but you could only get a 50cc. Yep. So it was really like a little tiny underpowered moped, like a bicycle with a petrol tank. So it looked a bit like a motorbike. So there we've got this heroic um, action figure on his moped. Carry on. Well, yeah, ca- carry on. yeah the, well, it's so. Yeah, and I, well, the other dis- distinguishing, uh, if, if I remember him, he had an open face helmet and goggles in those days, and his uh, hair came out of the back of the helmet to 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 some length. And he maintained his his, his mythological status was uh, was proven one night when he claimed that he could do sixty five down Stonington Road, uh, much to no, no, nobody accepted that that such a thing could be possible on an FS one E, and um, we gathered. We gathered to see him. It was like Malcolm Campbell, but uh, uh, and we did see him do sixty-five. Was that we do? Did you do it timers and all of that? How no, 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 no. Wait, just we all agreed it looked like sixty-five. Yeah, well, never, never, that, seen, never seen anybody never do seen, sixty-five before. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks yeah, like yeah, sixty-five to me. Yeah. yeah. When I was yeah. a, a child in the sixties, there was a fella at the end of our street, and he had um, a scooter which he'd uh, welded on extended forks. <laughs> Onto the front, which kept, so it was like a, a scooter, scooter but, with, chopper. But, but chopper, yeah. yeah. So it was like um, it was a chopper, 
Well, it was an easy rider. But yes. He also kept a lot of birds in his garage. Yes. So he came along in front of us. We were all gathered in a similar way either side of the road as he came down parading on his uh, chopped up scooter with a raven or a crow or something on his shoulder. No, I tell you what, it was a kestrel. Of course. He had a kestrel on his shoulder. I was going to say that. And he's, the, the front fork snapped. He fell off and the kestrel flew away and was <laughs> never seen again. I do you know what? I, I, as you were saying, I'm thinking, can I sound? Can I say this because it just sounds like a topper, but it's not. And I'll say it. We can cut it out if you want. I had a lad called Graham Bauer at my school who fancied a, a girl called Lynn Dayton, and he welded uh, some forks onto his chopper, onto his pedal bike chopper. And the idea was, uh, they not asked her out. The idea was that he was going to cycle past the school bus when we got uh, in the morning at ten to eight. And he was going to get off his chopper. She, was, she will have seen him coming down the road and ask him out. And that ended, ended very, very similarly. With the, he applied the brakes and the forks and the snapped. snapped and well, I've had, the, I've had the humiliation on, on Christmas morning. I suppose it would have been about 1970, possibly 1970 Christmas mm. morning. Um, the dream came true and I was given that a racing bike. Right. Uh, and I was also given by a great aunt a fold out umbrella, which I thought was a useful thing. I can't yes. remember why. A small one. It was only like a oh, foot long. It? But useful. That's good. That's useful. So it's Christmas morning. I thought, well, I'll go out very cold. I'll go out and give and, and have a cycle. And I happened to see the very attractive um, uh, sort of Marilyn Monroe lookalike, or it seemed to me, girl that would walk past my house each morning. I thought, this is a chance that I can maybe impress her and even say hello. Yeah. She was, I can't believe it. She happens to be coming on the road just as I'm going to be seen on my new racing gold motorbike with five gears, by the way. Um, motorbike or? No, no, but, but pedal bicycle. Carlton, I'm, was it? I'm 12, yeah. about 12 years old. Right, 12 years. I'm, I'm trying to remember what the na- make of the no, bicycle was. It was Carlton. Carlton, I think I it might have been yeah, a rally. Yeah. I reckon. It might have been a rally. Anyway, it's, it was golden. Yeah. And so I'm with me drop handlebars. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have my, I'll take the small umbrella with me because yeah. that will, if it rains, I can put that up. Yes. And, and great, she comes. She sees that I've got an umbrella and a bicycle in the rain. Yeah. She'll know that. And yeah. so I thought, Dangerous so, under. Nurturing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm just pedalling along with the with the umbrella dangling before, and just so I get alongside it, I just thought I'd give a glance of just hello, you know. She has, you know, she probably never seen anything yeah. impressive. The um, uh, umbrella s- sways into the front wheel, causing an immediate stoppage of the bicycle, yes. uh, which then propels me over the handlebars at speed, landing me on my face in front of uh, said person. Who I then look at her in complete shock, yeah. and she sort of looks at me in complete shock. And I said completely the wrong thing, really, because of the shock and the, the immediate yes. surge of pain. Instead of saying, oh, ha, 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 we must see you <laughs> yeah. some other sometime. Merry Christmas. Funny us meeting like the Merry yeah. Christmas, funny yeah. we met like yeah. this. Yeah. What a funny way to meet. I just sort of shouted at her, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> and do you know, I never saw her again no. to this day. No, no. Yeah, Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. yeah. I was... Uh... I was, I'm just, I was I'm not, transported but did you, I tell you what I've got to be honest because I can't let it pass I didn't hear Golden the first no, time I, yeah. Golden put a whole new slant on that story a golden me. bicycle yeah, the golden yeah. bicycle yeah. Yeah, 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 legendary golden yeah legendary yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like a legend there was quite uh, along our street there was the fella on the on the scooter with the chopper there was quite a lot of of mechanics yes up that road. yes and there was one fella and he had one of those light blue Invalid cars, yes, which he put a Cortina, put a Cortina engine in Jesus it. Jesus Christ! And uh, he used Is to go in the middle possible? of the night, at two o'clock in the morning. If you could hear him tearing up and down Yarm Road in this little tiny little invalid car with a huge engine in it, like a like a cross flow, like a sixteen hundred. I don't know. He did it, but he, he squeezed he it that, in. That, he do, he'd be doing he'd well been... over 160 miles Jeez. an hour. <laughs> <laughs> did he used carriage. to pick those cars up and, and move them at night That's with right. your friends? Yeah, we spent yeah. an awful amount. Yeah, where's of time. an invalid's car? Let's we move it. We put them into people's yeah. gardens. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. about the invalid you need yeah. it in the morning. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Happier times. I think. Yes. Yeah. Simple. That's right. A thank you uh, to our sponsors this week, which are. Chicken Kievs and Spice Girl flavoured crisps. Do you have mascots in your car for good luck? Hanging from your um, 
from your mirror. The only thing... Maybe a leg of mutton. I've only had one. I, I always say it about the only thing I've ever kept... I did a deal with some Albanians for... I had a Audi S8 that had got a, an APR tune on it. It's a 720 brake horsepower. This is a few years ago, two years ago. Amazing thing. And some Albanians that I met... <laughs> Offered me a BMW 640D and an Audi A8 in and some money for my car, which I accepted. And in the black BMW, which was my principal transport, it had uh, some Ru- Romanian Albanian pop stars uh, necklace <laughs> oh. uh, with uh, skulls on it. Uh, which offended my son Fred. His aesthetic was absolutely outraged. He couldn't stand it. So for that reason alone, it stayed in the car. And that was him, that was that's, a mascot. That's, that's a one and only. Because well, of... Fred didn't like it. You kept it in there. He, well, he made so much of a fuss. Oh, if he'd just said I don't like it, I'd have agreed with him, and it would have gone. But he opened the door to the car and went, "That can go. It's ridiculous. You look an idiot with that." So it so it stayed. But no mascot, no, 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 nothing, nothing on there. Nothing on there, no, no. And I've never jobs. had names for my cars either. That's not a, no. not a big fan of... No, but I, I quite like to have badges on my badge bar. Yes, yeah. God, yeah. yeah but, you, you know. but you've never had a mascot. Um, what's hanging from the the hanging the, of maybe you know there's the nodding seated, dog. Seated, there's a there? seat. Yeah. I did have a nodding dog actually. I had a Humber Hawk Saloon many years ago, and I did have a nodding dog in that, which somebody gave me as a gift. Um, but I think when you break suddenly, it would sort of then hit the people's heads who were in the back seat. Yeah. So it's not, it wasn't so practical. And then shake it, said, if, mm. it, yeah. No. But then no, nowadays, you'd be very lucky to see, you know, I'm looking, always on the eye out for that, but I don't think I've seen a nodding dog in a vehicle. Dash cams have that, taken the place exactly. where they would have been. But see, it's, it's, it was brought back by the, s- um, the you, Churchill dog, mm. which oh, I was, yes. had something to do with. There's a strange story, because... Bob ended up doing the do- the voice of the nodding oh. dog. It was a lot, no, no, no. Now, this started off with my friend in the 80s doing an impression of Derek Guiler. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a desert So then you, I yeah. nicked it from him. Yeah. And then Bob nicked it from me. And, and it Churchill's. ended up as the this voice of the, the voice dog. Of and now someone else does it. So. That story, that law, no, 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 is Derek Gyler. Is uh, got, if you take it right back, yeah. it's right about back to six the, right back to his, Yeah, yeah. Back, yes. In, in one of my favourite ever sitcoms of all time, Fen Street Gang. Yeah, yeah. Which I watched. Well, he played recently. the janitor. Oh yes. Oh, no, you can't oh, make a monkey a, out of a desert oh, rat. No, no, no. a desert rat, you know. Oh yes. Yeah. I think he was a great jazz musician, Derek Gyler. Was he? Really? Yeah, I think so. He liked trad jazz for some reason. I think that, but I'm just saying that. Oh, well, didn't a, he play the the washboard? Maybe something like that. But he was, yeah, sort of trad jazzist. He liked all of that, I believe. But I mean, I don't know if you use that when doing his voice. Just or you just just sort of take your boring mind, you know. Yeah. Um, well, that's the nodding dog story. But you could nowadays. Yeah, I thought that. you'd have saved that for a later show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could have finished with that. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was a. It would be quite nice to have a nodding dog, but with cameras in it. With his it, yeah. eyes and yes. cameras. They'd have to, but they, it'd have to be fixed though, because you, you wouldn't get a good representation oh. of the crash because the dog, <laughs> the dog would be looking the dog's up and head down. Would be going up and down. Except yes. once it stopped, you got out and the person was trying to attack you. Yes. You'd get more. As, he wouldn't. One. He wouldn't suspect he was being filmed. Number one. Which is great. Yeah. So, so he Number he, two. So so you can actually feel free to stab it to death. That's right. And then, secondly, um, you'd yeah. be thinking, it, it would, it, you would get out of the view of the whole situation because the head would be going up and down. I also so when he drags you onto yeah. the roof of the yeah. kid's car, yeah. it will get odd shots I, of it. Yeah, I think also, down. if he came to smash your face, if it was a huge uh, volatile man that decided to smash your face in, the sight of a nodding dog might uh, engender empathy. It might yes. be like, it, well, sh- the, he can't, maybe he couldn't stand the shame of beating somebody who's got a nodding dog. I had a friend of mine who I took... I had an Austin Healey 100, and uh, this friend of mine wanted to come out for a ride in it, and he weighed, I would say, about 40 stone. (laughs) That's not true. That's not true. It is true. He's not true. He's a giant, and he's also about six foot eight. Yeah, but not 40. And he was 40 stone. 20, I'm not. I'm not kidding. And we went is round a, and round about. Is a cow. We went round and round about and it bottomed out. <laughs> and it was so embarrassing because I said, you're going to have to get out and get back in when I get the other side of the roundabout. 
I'm not kidding, that's <laughs> absolutely true. I know you're not, that's why I'm laughing, but you call me 40 stone. <laughs> you know, not, you <laughs> My uncle Barry was 26 stone, and I find it very hard to conceive of him getting in another 14 stone on top of that. I'm sorry, that just... What? Well, maybe not for you, but 38 stone. Yeah, <laughs> let's not be daft. Maybe 35. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Tony Pitts. Thank, thank you for your um, enlightening <laughs> stories. And uh, we wish you all the best yes. on your return trip. Yeah, thank yes. you very much. Yes, no points for you. No. <laughs> we hope. Well, um, there goes Tony Pitts driving off into the horizon and one of his many cars. One of his many cars and he'll have another one next month. I wonder if it'll have Tony Pitts... This is Tony Pitt's car written on the side of it. It really would be. I mean, maybe we could sponsor us. I've just been on uh, Jim and Jules's Joyride. Yeah, and I'm that get would... that painted on the side of my car. We could maybe get a deal with Rolls Royce on this. Hmm, it's worth a thought. Thank anyway, you. Anyway, should you have any comments or reviews that you'd like to uh, leave, write them on a postal order and send them with a pound <laughs> to somewhere. I don't know where you send these reviews to, but. You Please know, do, yeah. You can work that out. Yeah, it will keep us working for um, another five minutes. Thank you. Have you got a motoring-related song there? Oh, I most certainly have. My old man says follow the vein. And don't dilly dally on the way. Oft went the vein with me own pegs in it. I was behind with me old cup linen, but I dillied and dallied, dallied and dillied. Lost me way and don't know where to go. And you can't trust a special 